The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Navy Federal has great rates on auto loans. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. It was my day yesterday. I drove up to A&M. Oh. Because Jack's looking at A&M too, right? So I went, drove by the George Bush and then you know football stadium. And then JT's like, dude, you have to come. I'm like... Uh, so I drove all the way up to College Station, drove back, and then blasted. Yeah, we were there. Oh, were you? For the day before. Golf game. Was it yesterday? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's check it yeah. <laughs> so I've been all over days. Texas, <laughs> College Station, San Antonio, and back. So yesterday was a busy day. Oh but yeah, God. so we love AM. So I told Jack, I'm like, having you guys an hour away from AM, I'm like, that. Yeah, well, the. The Aggie Expressway gets there faster than that. So there's, it's yeah. not built yet, but oh, there's, okay. um, it's almost done. It's a new highway called the Aggie Expressway yeah. from here to A and M, and it'll cut off about twenty minutes. Oh wow! So that's yeah. about forty minutes. Yeah, oh, it'll be. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they're yeah. actually naming it the Aggie Expressway. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah, he wants to. He wants to fly for the Navy, so he's you know looking at. I don't want him to be a Naval Academy, so he's looking yeah. at the Corps of Cadets up that's at. A good program. So we know Kara all went to. Do you know some yeah, people? Know Kara oh, went to A and M. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's good to know that you guys we, know people. We got some connections. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. We actually, oh, we we like actually know too, a so. lot of students yeah. there too. Um, Joe uh, Matassa, one of our yeah. really close friends, their son will be going in as a freshman next year. Oh, nice. So he'll be there. Or he would take yeah. classes down there. So you know, and we'll Tyler be, Black's daughter. We'll be freshmen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Madison. Oh, yeah. Madison Maddie's there. Uh, we have a. Oh good. Yeah, yeah, we actually know a lot of kids that are in 20, about to go in, so oh, we can introduce <laughs> him. Yeah, he'll be a senior next. So we're going to come out in Speaking the fall of the graduation. Uh, when there's a game going on oh, and good. do a campus visit. So we, we'd love to yes. yeah, we'll come out and, and bug you again, if you don't mind. And it's we'll great introduce school. you to oh. Rick Perry because he's at every game. Oh, good point. Yeah. Oh, shit, I forgot about that. All right, well, good. They Let's, have their own underground. Oh, yeah. oh you're telling me about the alumni yeah, network. See, yeah. Hey, look, man, they'll spot each other. From across the way, and then it's a cult for sure. Going. It is right? secret handshake. <laughs> yeah, they, they got all that, man. <laughs> it's like the Masons, it's a, it's a freaking thing, man. <laughs> like the Masons. <laughs> what say? Yeah, that's serious. There you go. Wow. Yeah, I saved up. I had my money saved up before I actually even got to school yep. to get the ring. The I ring, you have to have the ring if you go to AM. And when you get the ring, Otherwise, there's a whole ceremony. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like each person has a ring dunking yeah. ceremony. Oh, wow. And even if you don't drink, they drop it in a pitcher of beer. And you got to get it. And you have to like drink. But it's, you invite people. It's like a reception. Yeah. Like you invite a Anybody accidentally swallow it? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> See you in a couple days. Crack their teeth. A lot of people crack their teeth, especially the guys, because their rings are huge. Bang. Yeah, it's huge. Oh, Jesus. But yeah, almost like I would take like 80% to throw it back in. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> because it's just, you took like the whole picture. Yeah. Like as fast as you can, and you find it. Do they yeah. still do that? Do about that? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I did it. Because oh, yeah. we used to do that in the Navy for our wings, but Big Navy has stopped that. Because it's alcohol hazing. And, uh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the Navy. Yeah. <laughs> they just say it's not uh, sanctions. Yeah, sanctions. Oh, okay. Except for the bonfire. Yeah. 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 It's not. It's off site or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. The, the organization that does the bonfire, like they're an organization that works all year long to cut all the wood. They do all the all year, mm -hmm. and then they. So it's a private event. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the group can't be. Oh, I get it. Okay. And at the bonfire, don't they like announce all of the alumni that died that year? Yeah, every year they do that. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, no. have, like, yeah, they have like a, they keep track of anyone that's died that was a, an alum and that's they. The muster. So that's oh, yeah, the muster. Separate. Oh, they sorry. The muster, yeah. and that's like every year they'll honor every person that's died in that year that was in that like, Wow. Even if they're. You know, hundred years. Uh, they're truly the twelfth man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they are. They 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 live it. They live it, man. <laughs> it's just like everything else. Like us, like in the military, which you, you're a pilot, you you one of them. Yeah, yeah. Like a completely different human. Correct. You come in normal package, model, base, <laughs> everything like that, and as you go through life, you start strapping. You. That's right. Components <laughs> on that. That is. Yeah. They're one of. The, that's one of them. Awesome. One of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately opens up doors for you. Yeah. yeah. What a great network. I just met, I mean, living in South Florida. So this is a funny story. I got to Kingsville in flight school and I'm from New Jersey, right? So I. Is that where you were born? 
In Jersey, yeah. South Philadelphia. Yeah, man. Born and raised. <laughs> Exit. Playgrounds where you spent most of your days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, what, what, what was the other guys? Did you just quote yeah. DLC? <laughs> <laughs> so I get to Kingsville, Texas, man, and I go for a run. I'm, I'm going for a jog on this road. First of all, it's Africa. And second of all, the road goes to infinity. I'm like, so each car that comes, truck to That's a by, real description of what, what you're talking about. Exactly. That's each truck that comes by is beeping their horn, and I'm from Jersey. I'm like, fuck you, too. <laughs> by the fifth truck, I realize they're waving. I'm yeah. like, oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> what an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm, right? already, I'm in the grass here. And they're like, howdy. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Bro, yeah. Jerk. Y'all lean on y'all's horns up there. When I first oh. time, it's amazing. Like, I, it's like oregano. It, it is. <laughs> like dust or something, man. It's just everywhere. We don't do that down here unless you're beeping at the cows, right? Or you're trying to say hello to somebody. Yeah. Very rarely do people. Yeah. Would. Yeah. Oh, no, if man. If you're saying like, hey. Hey, uh, the, no, the horn. Oh, <laughs> it's, uh, people that live next door to each other pulled over on the side of the road because they saw each other in town and it was a big deal. <laughs> hey, what are you doing out, right? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's like a whole new meetup. It's like seeing your friend for the first time outside of school yeah. in the restaurant. You're like, oh my God, what are you, are you real outside of the <laughs> yeah. deal, man? Like, yeah. yeah. A horn to us is like a, a fighter pilot, fo a Fox missile. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Sure. Yeah. People yeah. are nice. So, yes, so up at AM, that's what, uh, so. Being from South Florida, it might as well be New Jersey South. So going around A and M, people are waving and I'm like, oh, okay, calm down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're saying howdy, and they're, yeah, yeah. that ain't a middle finger. That's five. <laughs> that's a safety yeah, word. <laughs> You're amongst friends. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Bro, it's like the it's like the shaka in Hawaii. Yeah. Like when yeah, they yeah. cut you off in traffic or you, they, they throw that sucker out. It's, it's like, all good. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, good, yeah. man. Apology accepted. That's right. <laughs> Right. I heard what, what's another one? Um I read the other day it was like, hey man, if you've got a bunch of people pissed off and going at each other, just yell America. <laughs> America. <laughs> and then they'll just be like, Yeah, yeah. America. America. Look at America. Team America. You know what I mean? That yeah, that was legendary for our generation. Oh I think God. it programmed us actually. Andrew, you want to kick yeah, off? let's kick this thing off. So I'm already recorded, so that's good. But uh we have got a great guest in store for you guys. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I've got a great Patreon question for you guys, and then it's gonna it's gonna grow legs because I have another conversation. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go backwards. Have y'all seen this story right here yet? Where at the Amarillo Zoo, their night camera caught this picture, and this is real news, it's not fake. They've posted this on the internet, and they're trying to identify what this creature animal is. What do you guys think? Chupacabra? It's like one of my buddies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... I, it is that looks like a person. Like, it's, it's something crazy. I mean, it could be a person, but those are some. Do you guys see North Man? Skeletal legs. Not yet. Oh my god. My sister saw that's it. That's North. It's North. That's because they wear the werewolf heads. Yeah. And they the Norse man and they chant before they go into battle, man. That looks like something from yeah. North Man. But dude, that, that could be some old cowboy. <laughs> see them legs? Like he's yeah. been saddled up for a whole life. He's all bow legged too. Bow legged, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> He walks in a seated position. I'm trying to mind his own business. <laughs> <Exactly>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it walks it looks like position. I'm a still skinny riding. man with, yeah, like a headdress, a wolf kind of headdress on. Or a mullet. It might be a mullet. <laughs> it's a mullet. It's a, mullet, it's a back peace dude. pipe, and the guy is smoking a peace pipe with a mullet. Yeah. It's, it's, it does look like Sonic the Hedgehog. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I thought that was an interesting story, which so rolls me. what do you me. think? I, I don't know. I, I looked up what, what a chupacabra looks like. Think? They don't. They genuinely aren't sure. They literally posted a news article. I think this is from the zoo's marketing department. Got, it's got <laughs> They're doing a great job. <laughs> you know, top notch. Top notch. <laughs> so what's which zoo is it? I told you, man. It's uh, one of the employees. Oh, one of the employees of got real drunk. They're, yeah. they're driving. They're driving the revenue up. At Amarillo, they're trying to get. Tourists. I've seen all kinds of things walking out on the streets these days, man. There ain't no telling. I've seen some of those. In we Vegas. got all kinds of stuff down here now. Actually, I think, <laughs> babe, you yeah. have a speech in Amarillo. In I'll go check fall. it out then. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna check it out. The zoo and Stay we're gonna check it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's if awesome. you don't recreate that, you don't have a hand. No, I will. Ass, I'll man. be out there. I'll take the men in black crew with <laughs> me, man. We'll go. We'll, we'll go recreate that. We'll check it out. Yeah. Good job, Amarillo. Uh, do you, do you, <laughs> so here's the question for you guys from our Patreon guests. Do you believe in superstitions? Yes. 
Oh yeah, Melanie, I know you got stuff to talk about on this one. What <laughs> do you talk to me? I'm from Louisiana. I mean, yeah. yes. She's got some chicken bones in her pocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Full of superstitions. Yeah. Um, yeah, like never. I freak out on the kids if they walk under a ladder. Like you do not walk under a ladder. You do not break a mirror. You do not like a lot of step those on a things, crack. Yeah, I, I will not. So yeah, most of them like they were, like I'm, there's just. Yeah, you just there's some things that mess up your juju. Like you can't do it. My sister won't let me split the pole. Like where you like you know if everyone's walking to the right, if you cut <laughs> oh, the left, yeah. the bread and butter. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I do not believe in superstitions personally, so I will intentionally do the things that irritate my sister. So okay. If it's like Good man. Walk under a ladder. Good if man. Break the. But I'll do the opposite. <laughs> of just of course to, you would, Andrew. Yes, it. the rebellious. <laughs> That's a rebellious me. How about yeah. you guys? Oh, I guarantee you. I mean, on the boat, if so, every landing aboard the ship is graded, right? So the mission was secondary to coming back and trying to land aboard the boat because you know you got five thousand people watching you. You know, we call it danger. We call it danger TV, man. Ain't no pressure. You know, you're always gonna have an audience. Yeah, you got five thousand people, and every landing's graded, right? So uh, when we'd pull into port, we'd have a little what we call folksal folly skit. So we'd have a party in the squadron that had the best landing grades would get an award and then the pilots who had the the top 10 pilots who had the best grades and then the number one uh, guy or gal got top hook right and of course you got a patch so i had like a string of you pilots okay's. and your patches man oh my god <laughs> so man. are y'all on vox when this is going down <laughs> do they open it up to the ship to hear no, you no, 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 no. oh because that'd be cool. that would be terrifying that would I'd, <laughs> that'd be hilarious yeah. if we could hear y'all no, oh god no 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 that's what's funny in like top gun when was it uh, Cougar and Merlin are yelling in the cockpit out, oh, land the plane, and the, everybody hears it? Yeah. I'm like, that's, that did not happen because that's only in her cockpit. But I had like a string. I had like 14 or 15 good landings in a row, and I was like leading. So I would not change my flight boots. I used the same <laughs> flight suit. I did not break what had gotten me to that point. Yeah. And people were starting to not sit next to me in the ready room anymore because <laughs> I think I was getting a little right, but I did not. And I ended up getting top hook on that, that oh, for that nice. period. So it's like a football game. A lot of guys won't wear different socks oh, yeah. or whatever. Like they won't. What wash about their on uniform. the teams? I guarantee you, uh, you, you guys. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe it's superstition is not a word. That's what normal folks use. Oh, we have one of my buddies <laughs> would so not normal. change his uniform or bathe. He was one of my snipers, and this guy's a lawyer. I mean, if you look at it, he wouldn't even when he was out there. He had to have his own tent. I had one guy that chewed on a cigar. He was my primary driver. And he chewed on a cigar for two deployments. That's six months. He had uh, duct tape and rigorous tape around that thing, and he would Velcro it to the top of his Humvee <laughs> visor. And before every op, we get in there, and I had this whole crank up procedure. Like yeah. I get on the comms and just be like, you know, smoke, you know, roll out. Yeah, here we go. Like, yeah, just like that, man. And down would pull that freaking thing, I, that that freaking cigar full of duct tape, and start chewing on that sucker. He goes, ever since I started chewing on this. Nobody so much has got a fucking splitter. <laughs> hey, dude. I mean, guys from across the board would, every one of them had their own thing. Yeah. It was almost as if when you would watch them go through it, they would break the tension on everybody sure. else. Because they, it, it, like, super, check out the weird guy. <laughs> yeah, super focused on what that. And um, it's a, it, it, it snaps you into a routine. Yeah, don't walk yeah. under a ladder, dumb shit, because shit could fall on you. And you could, there's just a lot of stuff that goes with that. Yeah. I, there's been a couple of them that dropped on us when uh, when we were going to do something. And normally I won't show those out loud, but when they happen, I'm like, oh, we're going the opposite direction, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like a black cat um, crossing the road or whatever. Yeah. He has turned around and we've gone to like a totally different route because of black cat. Okay, in front so of us. What, what is what we were going to do. When that freaking black cat yeah. crossed my path, and I was like, yeah, no, "That's <laughs> a sign, man." That's I didn't want to go anyways, and that could be no. I'm not superstitious on that at all. But that moment, yeah. going to that thing to when that, that happened, I was like, "Noted, I got it." <laughs> right that. I was like, "All my buddies can't be wrong at the same time." Yeah. <laughs> Message received. Yeah, got it right. Locked in. Black cat confirmed. Yeah, it. yeah. Never again was it a problem. But on that day, I was like, "Yeah." It's interesting because I, th I think we're kind of educated people, man, but being superstitious, but it, it, it has served us, right? So oh. the guy with the cigar, it served him, right? My stinky boots and flight suits served me. What a great stories, though. It got me here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when you hear them guys that don't change their socks or they, the, they do this something, the rubber band, the rubber band guys are yeah. hilarious. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. We all go through that rubber band phase, I think. 
You, know, you see him wearing on a wrist. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a face. Yeah. Rubber band face. It's a face. Also, <laughs> cuts off our circulation. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you see the guys wearing three and four of them, might have a talk with them. Yeah. <laughs> and their hands turning purple. Yeah, I was like, yeah. three and four of them, so much, man. Hey, we, need, we need to talk, man. I get one or two, but. Andrew, are you su- you're not superstitious? I'm not superstitious. Oh, my God. At all. Good for you. I mean, that just means life's mean to you. It's not that I don't blame it, right? It's right. I have terrible luck. I'm not blaming this on anything. Yeah, dude, now you don't have anything to blame it on. Right? I can't blame it on the rubber band. That's okay? just hard as shit. Take, that's you that's you hilarious, didn't have a pet dude. rock growing up or anything? No, I tried or? to sell a rock when I was a kid, but I, it was my, not my pet. How brilliant is that guy? That's who we need to get. Find that guy. <laughs> pet rock, dude. Is he still alive? Yeah, no John, kidding, man. what about you? Uh, not really. Kind of the latter thing. Yeah, I don't walk under a ladder because people could drop stuff on you. Like, that makes sense. It's purely just a safety purpose, yeah. it's not actually. That's superstitious. It's safety. It's safety. Yeah, it's safety. <laughs> now, if I had a cranial on. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do love the song Superstition by Stevie Wonder, though. So yeah. that's Stevie Ray Vaughan's version. Great rhythm. So, yeah, great. That's, great. I think that's about as far as I get in superstition. Right. So. Don't break the mirror because you'll cut yourself. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Safety. Yeah. Now, well, <laughs> when I, I was at A&M like decades ago, but I remember they said, do not walk on the grass because every blade of grass is a dead Aggie, right? Yes. Oh, that's a thing. All right. Oh, God. That's a, so you guys are full of superstition. Hey, they, so I think the Academy has one, too. If you walk across on your with your boots or something, like I had a buddy yeah, went to the Academy yeah. and went, went to the Academy. They're funny about walking on, on that stuff. Oh, yeah. That's, no, no, no. Okay, so back to that with going into a cemetery like ass whipping do kind of not yeah, yeah. like walk, walk on, the on the grave i like, still don't do that i still that don't do that either out. and it because you can wake the dead like i was yeah. always told as a kid you'll wake I mean, the dead it's disrespectful and yeah, it is yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah so i we go to the cemetery a lot um me and the kids we actually we love the geocaching thing yeah um and most of them are in cemeteries and i'm like do not walk on a grave <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's another that's superstition that. thing. That was big, that ingrained tell you, from a young. I tell you what, there's yeah. a monument built to Mike Murphy of New York, and this kid smashed it. Oh, mm-hmm. I remember that a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah, and then he got hit by two different cars at the same, at the same time. time. True story. Died. Yeah. Whoa. Died. Oh yeah. my God. No way. So it depends on who you mess with. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He did, wow. and he was a kid. He was a, he kid. Was a teenager. He. I don't even think he knew he think he who knew Michael Murphy happening. was. Oh, okay. It wasn't like a personal. Just vandalism. It was just vandalism. Oh, he was just being a punk. <clears throat> yeah. That's crazy. That's brutal. Yeah. I can tell you stories like that all day. Oof. That'll make you superstitious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Keep going. I'll make Here's a raise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Superstitious training in session. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can change your mind. That's right. I just don't goes. want to. That was Walk a great under a ladder and watch what happens. Yeah. That was a good, really good one. Yeah. Hey, we got a great guest in store for you guys. Matthew Wiz Buckley is a decorated retired Navy fighter pilot, turned CEO, published author, and renowned speaker for Fortune 500 companies. He's the founder of the Top Gun Fighter Foundation, whose mission is to support veterans. Wiz, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having us. I yeah, appreciate man. it. Good to see y'all. So it didn't take long to get here, huh? You really do all this? <laughs> That's a load of shit, man. That's not... It's a lot of shit, or it was a load like you didn't do any of it? You heard me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you heard me the first time. Dude, I, I, every time we link up, or it's, it's usually I'll hear something from the other guys. Yeah. Like, man, do you have any idea that the guy does this? I'm like, no. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me, though. One of the Nexus, overachieving Nexus we have. Oh, no, so thanks man. for doing this. Thanks yeah, for no, bro. Thanks for having me. Thanks for your hospitality, too, Melanie, yeah. and your kids, too, man. No. <laughs> God fearing good good kids. It was an honor meeting them too. Thank you. Oh, I'll yeah. go in there and throw whooping on them just because everything's so good. <laughs> keep them in line. Just keep them in line, so bro. Just, <laughs> just, I don't want you to get too happy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> keep them on their toes. Poor Axonati. Uh, no, the, the, yeah. Man, take us way back. Where, where did you grow up? How did you get yeah, where you're at? Yeah. Born South Jersey, uh, South Philadelphia, one of six uh, Irish Catholic kids. And, Are everybody uh, gangsters? No, I was Jersey Shore, like not the MTV Scuzzy one. Yeah, you I were. was like, come on, dude. <laughs> lies, lies. Lies. I rock. Yes, you were, dude. Come on, you're a pilot. Yes, you were. <laughs> it's totally kind of stereotype. Right. That's what that's for. Okay, <laughs> this is that bothers me so bad when people are like look at me and they're like, "You're from Texas. You, can you ride a horse?" Yes, I thought that was the whole damn point. <laughs> I fit that stereotype. <laughs> If you're a pilot, I need to see patches everywhere. Yeah, I man. Have a, you know, I got patches ass, you can't even see. Kick-ass call sign. You know, great stories about you guys getting plenty of sleep. You know, all that stuff that we don't <laughs> oh have. My God. I mean, I'm a, a Navy pilot, not an Air Force pilot. Those guys <laughs> have crew day, man. Big difference. Yeah. Big difference. But, yeah, uh, a huge difference. Yeah, grew up Jersey Shore. Uh, 
you know, service above self type of thing. My, my parents were just uh, always ingrained that. I love the beach, love flying. I knew I wanted to serve my country, so that was kind of a Reese's peanut butter cup to. Uh, dad a pilot? No, no, no. What did he do? His dad, he, he, he worked in a law firm in Atlantic City as like an investigator. His dad. Gangster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> knew it. La Casa Nostra. Um, <laughs> but his dad was in the Navy. He was on a sub in the Pacific. Come on. In World War II, man. Oh, so wow. As a cook. Oh, yeah. yeah. That yeah. might be the hardest job in the Navy. Unbelievable. Besides Navy wife. That's it. Yeah. No kidding. Well, that's it. Shout out to Navy wives there. But he, was, he was a cook on a sub in the Pacific. That's and awesome. And I still have his uh, silver dolphins. It's really Aww. cool. Well, um, did you get like the boat and all that stuff? That's cool, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those. That was a day. Dude, that job, I couldn't even imagine. No. Nah, have, have you ever been on a sub? I have. Yeah, plenty. It's, how do you, <laughs> that's why I don't even get me started oh, that's about right. that. It's a <laughs> joke. I mean, I, they did that on purpose just to mess with me. This badass car I got is from sub duty. You told me it's sitting in that thing for like 10 hours. You can't believe it. That's the, an SCV. He was that's actually, a smaller version. But to get in, sub. in that, we had to get on the subs. Oh, Fast real? attacks, the boomers. I mean, I spent, I walked on diesel boats plenty of times. Yeah. I have such respect for, for the bubbleheads and submariners. I tried to get my dolphins while we were on there. That's just it's harder you than you to get think. your qual. Wow. Yeah, because we were on there so long. True. And um, and it's just respect. That's why they get the best digs when they get they eat better than anybody. Yeah, 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 they yeah. get all the new movies that when they're partened up, man, they're 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 housing, and it should be. Because you it's a can of whoop ass that you throw freaking underwater. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then yeah, dangerous yeah. suckers, dude. And and how that, did you fit in a rack? <laughs> no, they put me on the torpedo tubes, man. <laughs> That's, that's that was terrifying. Fire man. one. We actually, I have a picture of this. It's Marcus and his team, and all of the guys are. The I'm same damn near guys. the shortest one there. They're all the same. Wh whatever. Oh somebody God, lost man. a bet. Were, I think my chief pissed somebody off. Go ahead. They had to sleep in the torpedo racks. Oh, bro. <laughs> yeah. Did they have a do not fire like? <laughs> no, yeah. They, they had it all marked down and griped down and everything like that. And it was, dude. They had so much fun messing with us. In oh, the beginning. I Because I mean, when we would. I'll never forget laying on that rack. My elbow would touch the bottom of the rack and my middle finger would touch the ceiling. Oh, no, no, no. So to, to That's shift, how you had to, we had to slide out of the rack. You couldn't roll. Roll over. You couldn't roll over because your shoulders, you oh couldn't even. Oh, my God, man. And the guys were stacked <laughs> shoulder to shoulder. Man. And dude. that's how they slept. No, no, oh, dude, the boat. He's they would flashbacks. <laughs> they would do, I am. They would, and they stuck an, an Australian SAS crew on. I'll never forget it. Best, best time and the worst time. And they would do missile drills and then bubble drills. And that boat would just be go from, we'd lay in there. And all of a sudden, the, all the alarms would go off. And that thing would go straight up and breach out. And then we'd be like, <laughs> and then the torpedoes are <laughs> sitting there. And then they'd sink that son of a gun. And, we'd, and I know it's because we pissed somebody off. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, let's take a second to thank our sponsors over at Fabric. It is time, parents, to cross something off of your to-do list. Probably most important things you can do all summer, which is life insurance. And I know it's summer. The last thing you want to be thinking about is life insurance, but hear me out, especially you parents. Fabric has incredible term life insurance policies that can be customized to your family. You can be up and running in just 10 minutes. That way you can fully enjoy your summer worry-free because you know your family is going to be protected. Fabric was built by parents for parents to help make it easier to manage your family's finances. They're all online. So everything is on your schedule. You don't need to schedule anything or make time for phone calls or appointments. You can apply online when it's convenient for you. It takes less than 10 minutes to apply. You can see your quote. You could personalize your quote to fit your family's needs. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. And their new lower prices mean significant savings over other providers with great quality policies like a million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. And the great thing about them is they've got over 1,600 five-star reviews on trustpilot.com they are fully backed by vanis life one of the most trusted names in life insurance since 1847 so you're going to feel confident knowing that you can get a high quality policy that's going to be perfect for your family they've got a 30-day money back guarantee you can cancel at any time and the great thing about they call it angles and dangles yeah, angles and dangles yeah. all day on yeah. us man and then the, the the reactor kids because there's nuclear reactors on this sucker i'll, I'll never forget seeing one for the first time you don't hear this dude i was uh I was on the mess deck eating some pineapples. I don't, you don't know what day or time it is. No. no. <laughs> and this kid walks up. He must have been 17. I mean, white as a ghost. This is what a white dude looks like, right? <laughs> and he had this big coat bottle glass on. He's covered in dust and dirt. And I had my, my poop suit, my coveralls pulled down. He mm -hmm. goes, you're one of the seals, right? He sat down right next to me. <laughs> the mess. 
And I was just looking at him, man. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> I was like, if you don't mind, do you mind telling me what it is you do? Well, He's like, you... I'm the I'm the mop. The, the I crawl under the reactors and clean up the dust bunnies. The the dust. The radioactive the, dust Yeah, the radioactive dust bunnies. <laughs> A legit, He's a legit human, mop. Mop. He, human mop. He would go under there and, and slide. He's the physical, He's mop. physical mop. Yeah, because yeah, he can, he can get down in there mop. and he just uses his uniform as a mop. Oh my God. He goes, <laughs> I was thinking about cross rating and getting a different job. I was like, bro. <laughs> you think? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, it, what you was running away from back home, man, but for them to stick your ass underneath that, if you're, you know. Go back and face the charges, whoa. son. <laughs> right. I'll never forget that, dude. Just throw yourself on the mercy of the oh, judge at this I mean, point. He was white and his hair was big glasses that they give us, dude. It even had dust in those things. And I was like, bro. This right here is a new recruiting it video was, for man. the, uh, it, it the was. Navy. Oh, my God. I'll never forget him, man. But well, that, he, I mean, he, you saw more subs than I did as an aviator. I think I saw one time like flying into the carrier. I'm like, that's a big ass whale. And it was like a sub sneaking under. Oh. I've seen it one once. Yeah. So, but you lived on it. Yeah. Yeah. And i tell you what, the, the, the pucker factor that gets me the, the worst one I've ever had was when they dropped us out in the middle of the ocean off of Hilo. And then uh, my chief was, we were waiting for the sub to pick us up. Uh -huh. And the water was purple. I remember it was beautiful, man, yeah. out there. And we were out there for a couple hours waiting. And then uh, he goes, hey, swim down about 30 feet, turn around, see what's coming at you. So I did, and I turned back around, and that sub, it's 500 feet, 15 stories, it's huge. And that thing coming at you, wow. it's it was, it didn't have to smile with teeth or anything. I was like, <laughs> what is that sucker right there? And the way we get in it is hilarious. You know, they, there's a little rope we have tied between us, and it just comes in, it, it drives right between us and sucks us back. We got to swim this long story. But anyways, Whoa. that's a hard duty. Yeah. Is that and how you, we got on that rabbit hole, man? like a week on him or two weeks where yeah. his grandpa had to live on that sucker for the yeah, whole Yeah, yeah, six oh, months. Yeah. I, I'll never take credit yeah. for having to live on one. I mean, I think two, two and a half, three weeks, maybe as long as the most. Yeah. 20 yeah. something days because we were going from uh, continent to continent. But wow. um, them guys, the only reason they have to come up is for food. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. if they got divers down, I don't think that. They could just send them out. I mean, it's pretty amazing that vessel. Yeah. That's so, creepy. That's a different Navy, though. Yeah, at right. least to me, as an Bro. aviator, we got planes, boats, and then or, or ships, Some and then bottoms, boats. dude. Those, that's a different Navy, man. You see the Chiefs, those Master Chiefs coming? Like, let's get back to sea. I'm like, well, Chief, with all due respect, sir, you don't really touch it. You know, come on, you down. Here. I mean, these dudes we are visited. Good. Yeah, they're different, <laughs> and they love it. They love being out there. No, oh that's a different world, man. It is, man. All right, yeah. so we got on that because of his grandpa's. His grandpa's <laughs> yeah. took it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So in World War II. So my dad wasn't uh, it, it service related, but I just it just kind of stuck to me. So uh, I knew I wanted to fly jets for the Navy off carriers. And then junior year in high school, man. That's um, what you said you wanted to do? Yeah, from an early yeah, age, man. man. All... My dad always, I, I'd watch, you know, Midway with my dad or like Sands of Iwo Jima. I mean, my dad was, you know, that type of guy. So, uh, and then uh, 86, I was a date myself, junior in high school, and Top Gun came out. Oh, I'm like, nice. son of a. Everybody wanted to be a Oh, my God, that. everybody. So it actually pushed me. Now I just study harder and, and all mm -hmm. that type of stuff. So I went to school down in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. All right. So is that kind of what put a, an idea of what it was like to actually become a pilot? I didn't know. Because when I saw that movie, I was like, all right, so you got to be in shape. Everyone has to be good looking. <laughs> Play you got to look good in aviator sunglasses. Yeah, you got to exactly. play volleyball. You gotta good play, hair. Good hair. Because <laughs> if you don't know, then... then the, the best part about the movies is they kind of set the role standard. Of what They set the stereotype. The stereotype. Yeah. Stereotype. Thank you. So before the movie came out, I think literally if you Google like 1985, they, the New York Times, they were advertising in the New York Times classifieds for Navy pilots. There was such a, they, they were scraping the bottom of the barrel, man. And Top Gun came out and like recruiting went up 500%. Yeah. So that screwed me. But Thank you, know, you I, Tom Cruise. <laughs> help me, Tom Cruise. Help me. So I had... Uh, I had, to, I had to, you know, bust my ass and study harder. So I went to Navy ROTC at uh, Jacksonville University in Florida, met my beautiful bride, Susie. Uh, been together since then. And uh, so Naval Aviation, as you know, anything in the military or Naval Aviation is a pyramid because the Navy's got helos, they got props, they got jets. And in jets, they got tankers, jammers, fighters. So it's a pyramid. You got you to gotta keep trying, keep trying, and keep trying to do your best. So, you know, a briefcase full of 50s got me Can a flight you swap slot. over? Like if you start one, one it, it's hard because they invest a lot of time. Like if, if you get in helos or props, it takes a an act of God to, to transition to a different airframe, even yeah. in that airframe. Like right, right. I want to oh, go really? if I want to go from a Hornet to some other type of jet. It's a whole 
it's it's a it's a process. So mm -hmm. once you kind of get because every one of them is so different. Yeah. Well, it's a lot, and it's a lot of money, a lot of train, you know, time to, yeah, to well, retrain you. So uh, I went through flight school down in Kingsville, Texas, uh, like we were joking about before, man, g coming from Jersey and Philadelphia to Kingsville, Texas. I'm like, what the hell? Is it's different. <laughs> That's different. You shoot a bullet and hit somebody in three states. I'm like, I mean, flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were joking about beep people beeping horns and me flipping them off, but realizing they were waving. Yeah. So I had, uh, I had the best time of my life flying jets down in Kingsville over the King Ranch. Oh, nice. Uh, I, I, I had a $7 million flight one time. So I took off in an A4, single engine jet, trainer, had some engine problems, and you got one engine. So I start dumping fuel, because I had just taken off. So I'm dumping fuel, because if you land too heavy, you can break the you know, landing gear, or, or if you try and stop, the brakes will catch on fire, because you're too heavy. So I'm dumping gas, and I declare an emergency, and I come in and land, and you know everything's good. And like a week later, there's this uh, JAG officer, this Navy lieutenant coming by. Like, JAG officer. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And Ensign Buckley. Hey, they came up with the name. I know. <laughs> they you, called themselves You that. named yourself. Yeah, y'all call yourselves the Jagoffs. Um, <laughs> I think they got in front of that. We're going to call us this first. Yeah, yeah, they tried so to. So you can't make fun of us. And when they say it, I just kind of like. Yeah. Did you say that? Or did they, they call themselves that, dude. It's hilarious to me. Was I thinking that out loud? <laughs> I'll never forget the first brief they said that. I was, I was like, uh, all right. Beat me to it. Beat me to it. <laughs> So Ensign Buckley, you know, get get in this office. I'm like, oh shit. He's like, seven million dollars. You owe the Navy, type of shit. I'm like, you take a check. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can you take it out of my ensign paycheck? <laughs> so after me, like the color right on my face, he's like, ah, I'm messing with these. Like I just got back from the King Ranch, though. You know, I we we cut him a check for X amount of million dollars. I'm like, why? They're like, well, you, when you were dumping fuel, you dumped fuel allegedly on. You know, twenty of their hundred thousand dollar, whatever they're called, Brahmas oh or whatever. Oh my god! So we, you know, got a stroke and check. I'm like, oh my god. He's like, it happens often. We have a good, you know, relationship, working thing. relationship. Yeah, we got a good. You know, they own half of Texas, and oh yeah, they let us fly gosh. jets around here. So That's it was funny. Crazy. So, but That's he awesome. knows the story. I spent more than that on a jet, sixty five. Yeah, Ben, you got the best stories. You're you're one of the unique, the unicorn officers. Like, well, you can pull. That's where they write standards off of guys. Murphy was like that. <laughs> I'm not kidding, man. Like y'all pull some stuff that people are like, well, what? Well, Wiz did that. Let's put that in the SOP. Yeah, you gotta have you gotta write the rule down. <laughs> and you, you move lines. That's hilarious to me. I, I very rarely do you have do you get two of those in your life. Yeah. So, so I've this had two. One, this yeah. was seven million. Yeah, yeah. That's a good and, one. And uh yeah, so the prize Brahmas. Do you want to hear the sixty five? Yeah. Absolutely. You want me to tell that yeah, one? Hold on, let's pause for a second. Cause yeah. I want the listeners to understand you were a what what in today's time we're calling top gun pilot. Yeah, and yeah. So I got the after I finished flight school in, in Kingsville, I went out to Lemoore, California. Mm -hmm. Which, when you think about getting stationed in California, what do you think? Volleyball, beaches, and stuff like that. Well, they put a master jet base in Fresno. Yeah, in the Central Valley, man. No yeah. offense to California, it's the armpit of California. Yeah. So when Susie and I drove for like a day and a half from Kingsville to Lemoore. We got there and all they did was change the sign yeah. from Kingsville to Lamore. It looked exactly the same. <laughs> oh my gosh. Straight cotton cattle. So I flew Hornets out of Lamore for about five years. Uh, I did two deployments. Mm -hmm. uh, first one on Lincoln and the second one on Kitty Hawk. I just wanted to preface that because obviously mm -hmm. the movie just came out. Then oh, yeah. Top Gun and everyone's so hype about it. Um, mm -hmm. So we want to hear the 65. Oh yeah. 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 So I, yeah. Uh, and then after uh, Lamore. I, I paid Susie back with, uh, we got orders down to El Toro first, before, yeah. uh, Marine Squadron before they closed it, and then down to Miramar after they closed El Toro. Uh, and then I flew Hornets out of Fort Worth for about five years. But when I was down in uh, Miramar, <clears throat> I was an instructor pilot in the F-18. And, uh, you know, I was a maintenance officer too. I, I got to do functional check flights. So whenever they did maintenance on a jet, uh, I, a guy like me had to fly it before we gave it to the students to fly. So is that a good deal job? Oh my God, it man. Is, right? You're about to find out yeah, yeah. <laughs> how good it is. Like a good deal job. <laughs> so uh, they're like, hey, Wiz, what are you doing, man? I'm like, nothing. They're like, hey, we need a, an acceptance flight on a, on a new Hornet. So an acceptance flight, it literally just came from St. Louis, man. They just made this Hornet, brand new Lot 20. Does it smell new in there? Oh my God. Is it like better than a new car? It, well, I mean, no grease, no hide fluid, no oil leaks. This thing. What is it? I can even imagine that. Oh my if God. If a new car man. smell does something to you, what does a new jet smell? So I, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're like, can you do an acceptance flight? Which it, it, it literally had, I think, two hours on the jet from like St. Louis to Miramar. So I walk out, 
from uh, I'm all dressed. I walk. It, this should have been in the movie Top Gun. I'm walking out to the airplane. And all the other jets, Marine jet, Hornets are leaking. You know, they're like this. They look like death. And this thing, it's like God put a little ding, like glint off the canopy. <laughs> right. No drop There's tank. There's theme music playing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I have my own band behind me. Uh, Literally the Top Gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no drop tank on it, no pylon. So it's called, it's what we call slick. Mm -hmm. It's clean, man. This thing, it's just, it's fast sitting there. So yeah, I get in the cockpit. It's sitting there fast. Oh, I'm yeah. just breezing this thing in, man. So I get out on the runway uh, and I, you know, full afterburner and I'm like out of the airplane already. I'm hanging on to the back of the plane because it is hauling ass down the runway. So I get airborne out of Miramar, get off of San Diego about 40 miles and it takes all of 7.2 minutes to figure out that this jet's perfect. And then <laughs> a lieutenant with extra gas happens. So the book says, you know, 50,000 feet is the service ceiling. And I'm like, Let's go test that out, man. Full afterburner, push the nose over in the mid 20s, go supersonic, and I'm hauling ass. So I just start climbing up, man. And I'm accelerating going. Because you up. can't go straight up, right? You gotta. Yeah, a little bit, about 45 degree, in. yeah, 60 degree climb. And I'm accelerating going up. I'm like, oh, this is the altimeter. It's like Bugs Bunny, man. It's just <laughs> spinning, you know, 30, 35,000 feet, 40, and I'm still zipping. And I go through 50,000 feet, man. And I'm like, all right, didn't hit my head. So let's just keep going. And I get up to about 60, 61,000 feet. And it's, it's black and blue. Oh my it's curvature gosh. of the earth and black. And I'm like, oh, you know, you can hear angels and stuff. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm like, wow. I didn't have too much time to enjoy it because all of a sudden it's like, hoo, hoo, hoo. So it does do that? Oh, God, yeah. The engine's uh, no air. <laughs> so oh, the God. engines were like. That sucker started hacking on you? Oh, the engines were hacking. <laughs> yeah. They were like, oh, come on. God. Come on, Wiz. Let's go. <laughs> so there's no breath hold manual on that thing? You hit breath hold, go up for a little bit, and come back down? And I'm like. I'm so naive to this. Are you hooked up to oxygen? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. So uh, you're really not allowed up there unless you're in a pressure suit. Because if there was like a pinhole pinhole in the canopy seal i, I would have like liquefied yeah but mm -hmm. you're a lieutenant they could take that um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah man yeah, that's why they do i that. was there that's right okay. <laughs> so so the engines are coughing i'm like oh shit i better well i got my altitude record let's go for speed oh my so, gosh and i'm hauling ass. you got comms going oh i'm not talking to anybody baby. i know but are they talking to you because <laughs> It could even nobody can talk to me. I'm all talking right, to God. Right. Well, that's what I thought. I was just curious as to when that. All right, cool. So, uh, but I'm hauling ass, but it's so there's no air up there, so it's sluggish. So I'm like, all right, let me roll over. So I go full stick, and normally down at altitude, you go full stick. I mean, you'll break your neck. So it's like driving with no power steering. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I was like in a tub, I was all right, moving the stick around. The jet's just doing this. All right. So I go full stick, and it just kind of rolls. And I point, I'll never forget this, man. Beautiful, not a cloud in the sky, right? Blue, black, but blue, straight down at the Pacific. And I'm leaving the afterburners engaged. I am going the, the speed of everything, man. And I'm hauling ass. So the last thing I see. What's that feel like? Dude, it's, well, it's insane. <laughs> straight down right 90 degrees nose low man do you yeah. have butterflies in your stomach or are you you're pushing the back of the seat lightheaded? you don't have time to think <laughs> Dude, all your you wrinkles think you're dead all your wrinkles went away you came hashtag back. maverick if you want to come back looking 20 years younger do this right oh my god dude if i did this again, oh no i yeah this is 27 28 year old stupid lieutenant so I am hauling ass and i was a political science major right so in the mid 20s probably came off good right yeah in the mid 20s i'm like Dude, you should probably start pulling out of this dive because you know you're hauling it. So I saw Mach 1.7, which I don't know, 1300 miles an hour, 1400 oh miles an gosh. hour. So I pulled the throttles to idle, and I'm going so fast that that reduction, it's like I hit a wall. I'm like oh. hanging forward in the straps, and that really got my attention. Now the butterflies are like hawks. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, yeah. they ain't butterflies oh. anymore. They're like. Like bubble guts. It's literally a bald eagle in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's a bald eagle in my stomach. America. So right. now I'm doing math. And I go, oh shit. See, that's where, that's where it would have been over for me. <laughs> <laughs> when they were like, hey, I got to start Done. crunching some gimbals. And I thought a radio in. I'd be like, Roger that. Hey, this is, we're not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> there was you math involved math. in this. I'm done. <laughs> so, shit. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> So I uh, so I put the stick in my lap, right? I pull back, 
But in the Hornet, you're a voting member, right? So when you do this, the flight control computers go, all right, Wiz wants to do this, but if he does that, we're going to disintegrate. And we don't want to disintegrate. So I pull this, and the jet gives me a little bit. I'm like, oh, man. So it's just giving me a little bit of pull, and I am hauling ass still downrange. And I'm like, quick political science, New Jersey guy math. I'm like, I'm going to hit the Pacific. And I can't eject. I'm literally, if I ejected at that speed, yeah, I'd vaporize. I'm vaporize you're, you're just gone, right? That's why we put our, we wear our dog tags in our boots because in most aviation mishaps, the only thing they, that's what they find are your boots. So I'm, I'm like, well, can't eject. And I'm screaming downhill, sticking my lap. And I was at absolute peace, right? I was calm. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of Susie and all sorts of stuff. No offense to Susie, but I'm like, the worst thing I was thinking about is I'm like, those son of a bitches are going to be the officers club later making fun of me. Like whiz flew right into the ocean no. going oh mock, whatever. God. Great story though. So I'm hauling ass and I'm like, I'm like what it's going to feel like when I hit the water. Am I going to know? You know, so I'm processing all this stuff and now I'm getting into the teens and the air's thicker. So now the jet's starting to bite. Now the flight control computers are like, all right, we can give you more. And I'm like, Oh, oh come on. So what are you moving at? A uh, hundred hundred feet for, uh, um, I think my second? like forty thousand feet per minute down, I think it was at one point. Oh I mean it's just gosh. it was insane. So I'm like a cotton ball at this point, like with the nose pointed up, but my vector just going straight down. I'm sticking the lap and I'm like, oh shit. Got like my lucky strike out. I'm like, come on, baby. <laughs> What's your victor, Victor? <laughs> exactly. So I come down and no kidding, man, rated, you know, fifty, hundred feet that I I felt all I felt was like water. And then I start climbing away. And, you know, we have like two mirrors up here and I see a rooster tail behind the jet and I climb on out and I'm like, woo, Dude. <laughs> <laughs> meant to do that. Oh so I, I level gosh. off, man. And I'm like, what the hell just happened, man? So I'm flying back to Miramar and I land and I, I walk in the maintenance department. Like, How's the jet, Lieutenant? I'm like, I just keep going. <laughs> We've got to take a quick minute like, to thank our sponsors I'm over like, at Navy Federal Credit Union. The they have the been camera. supporting the podcast <laughs> now for several like, years. You guys up. know they take care happen, of us, right? and so, so we I make sure to give them all the love we office. can. Becoming a member at Navy Federal Credit Union lets you experience way more. From everyday commutes to your next big vacation, the flagship credit card earns you three times the point on travel, so you can get rewarded for wherever you're headed next. The rewards they add up. Up, and I know that we all could use a vacation. Right? Plus, their Trump. premium travel so card has a low annual fee was. of just forty-nine dollars <laughs> and two so times the points I go in there, on all man, purchases and I was outside of travel. Meaning squadron. the rewards don't have so to end even kernel, when the right? vacation does. So I'm actually rewards, you can get a Navy Federal Auto Loan and reward yourself with a new car. Applying is on their mobile app, online, or by phone, and it is super fast. You can get a decision in seconds. Navy Federal has great rates on auto loans. Plus, with their car buying service powered by True Car, you can shop, you can compare, you can get up. Because I had a, it, it's top secret, but I had a couple get out of jail free cards that uh, I used all of them. Right. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. So, which he knew that? That's a great colonel, which means he was a badass too. Oh, yeah. No, he was a, he was a warrior. That, that dude, dude was a straight uh, up badass. He was. Uh, they talked to you like that? He took Marine? care. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, you know what I'm talking about? No, I knew. I thought these were going to fly off. He was going to hit a button and my yeah, wings fly off. Because they can do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Way of talking to you as well, man. No. Just like, he was a leader. He yeah, was so. Man, that jet, uh, I literally, $65 million airplane with two hours from St. Louis and 0.7 from me, busted that airplane. Oh, no. And I felt awful because when I went to go flying after that, that thing sat in the hangar and became the hangar queen. So they're starting to pull parts off because they had to fly in a team from St. Louis to x-ray the wing spar. Oh, so they gosh. started, it just... I'd, I'd hide from from this jet because it was just it's like why and I'm like walking out the I'm like oh you poor thing so it wouldn't fly anymore you could even... no they had to fly a team out to X-ray the wings so right, yeah. it, I remember it, it took a while for them gotcha. to get out to do it and in that time you know the maintenance oh, crew right, was like right, yeah, those are juicy parts right 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 and right. we need them for these jets oh my so they gosh. the team came out from St Louis and they're like uh, thank God I didn't crack the wings but I overstressed it was like 10 11 G's. Uh, which most people, I didn't pass out because it was, you know, why the, the last 12 seconds of my life, why am I going to pass out? I want to pay attention. Yeah, so thank like, you, God. The 10 G's, <laughs> 10 or 11 G's, 61,050 feet. And then they said like 49 feet was the last reading on the tape. So the guy's like looking around. He's like, unofficially, we will tell you, you got the altitude and the speed record in the Hornet. <laughs> 
Oh Officially, we, we didn't tell you any of the data. So that's when you should have taken the wings off, been like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. Deuces. <laughs> George Costanza, man, I should have went out on a high note. Oh but my god! But that was so in, in naval. It, it's a self cleaning oven, right? It's so you know I can count on maybe one hand the number of Hornet guys I know we lost in combat. They were all it was all training or stupidity. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was on the Lincoln, when we were doing workups to go to for uh, on our cruise, we lost eight. We lost eight. Well, that's because we train harder than we fight. That's exactly right, man. Yeah, it it should be a letdown when we go overseas. Yeah, it is. It is most of the time. I'm embarrassed when I, you know, people like, you know, you flew missions over Iraq. I'm like, I don't even want to. My 44 missions, flying at Top Gun, was harder than flying over. Yeah, I mean, more we got, we kill, we die. I don't want to say we kill each other, but that's kind of the nature of of what we do. Sure, to push each other. But true statement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It should if we go anywhere around the world to fight. If it's not a letdown, we failed right, in our yeah. training. Well, not right, exactly, and it that's part of our, that's part of it being in that this 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 world. Correct, that, it, it happens. Oh mm-hmm. So people who look down, like, hey, look, if we don't do that, then we'll get whipped. Correct. Yeah, but yeah, so that was so that you know, there, there's a ton of stories like that, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, so highest to the fastest. So I set a trend in flight school with the seven million. So I wanted to. Those are rookie numbers, kid. You got to buy right, those so, numbers. So. Uh, no, normally. <laughs> What year was this? The Hornet, the highest, the fastest, like 99. Okay, check. It's the same 2000. time I came in. That was a weird generation. We're yeah. really, like, because we're 1900s. Right on the 2000. Yeah, that cold cusp deal. Yeah. And then 9 11 happened, yeah. which that was opened up the door for us. So, right after you did that, did you get in any trouble? They send you somewhere or did you just keep going? I ended up getting sent to Saudi Arabia, man. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I dropped my. Because they normally do something. I got sent for 90 days to Riyadh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> then it wasn't short- without. <laughs> yeah. Shortly after that is when, uh, you know, our wars kicked off. Yeah. And that's when they wanted guys like us. Dude. And you were in the reserves at that time, right? So the morning of September 11th, I'm packing for my trip uh, as a pilot for American Airlines, my first flight. And I was also flying Hornets for the reserves out of Fort Worth. And, and I'm packing. And Susie comes in and she goes, you better uh, come out and take a look at the TV. Somebody hit the World Trade Center with a plane. I'm like, whatever. I'm packing. You know, bad weather, small airplane. And she, she's like, that look, right? So I'm like, all right. So I go out and I saw what you guys saw. Clear day, you know, big smoking hole. <clears throat> and I'm standing there going through my aviation checklist of how that could have happened. And the next plane hit. And I'm like, we're under attack. So I, ran, I still have my American Airlines uniform in the plastic because I, I ran in there. I pushed it out of the way and I threw on my flight suit, threw on my boots. I had an old 89 Porsche. And I think I broke the land speed record getting out of out to Naval Air Station Fort Worth. And I got out there just as they went to Delta and closed it. And me and uh, another one of my buddies made it out there, Gruff <clears throat> McGrath. And we called down to maintenance and said, Chief, how many jets you got? Four. We said, get them up, get them ready to go. And then uh, next door was an F-16 squadron, uh, the SPADS, 457th uh, Fighter Squadron. They called over. <clears throat> and of course, they're an Air Force squadron. They're rich. So they're tied into NORAD. Uh, so the general called over and said, hey, Wiz, it, it, you know, what, what do you got? I'm like, it's me and Gruff. He said, get over here. I got four, four F-16 guys over here. Get over here. So we're a poor Navy squadron in Texas. We're like, we got bullets and, and missiles. We'll hook you guys up. So Gruff and I ran over to the command post and literally two Hornet guys, four F-16 guys were huddled over, you know, coming up with our plan and the Pentagon gets hit. You know, they got all the TVs. I'm like, my God, man, holy shit. So those guys being proficient in stuff, they scrambled in their jets and Gruff and I got to the end of the runway fully armed and ready to go. So I went from potentially flying in an airliner that day to shooting one down oh to maybe even shooting down a, a squadron mate. Most of the guys in my reserve squadron were airline dudes yeah. and they were airborne that day. Imagine getting that order. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, a week after that, I got like a photocopied letter from American Airlines HR, like dear crew member, you're furloughed. So, you know, I lost my, my airline job in the blink of an eye, but a lot of people had it a lot worse, right? So, uh, yeah, kind of got kicked into Jimmy. So that was my airline career, man. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <It's a> brief, <laughs> brief. So I, I got the message loud and clear from God, man. So that was, a, that, was a, that was a gut check for me, man, 9-11. That is crazy. I, um, we all remember. Yeah. Brutal. So um, after that, you started – business yeah so 
you know, most guys sitting in the ready room playing foosball or doing whatever. I was reading the Wall Street Journal. I, I liked trading. When I, uh, I got stationed down at Key West when I graduated for like a year before I, I went to flight school, I got stashed. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, you know, I remember sending like a $25 check to the USAA Aggressive Growth Mutual Fund. And I'm like, because I just, you know, you know, you don't join yeah. the Navy to get rich. No. I knew I had to do a little something on the side. And then dating Susie at the time, you know, she kept Ann Taylor in business and I paid the American Express bill. So I yeah. bought those two stocks and that just kind of grew from there. So after I got furloughed, fr furloughed from American, uh, Thank God. Well, not thank God. I was going to say, thank God we got more funds as a reserve squadron so I could reserve bum full time. So I went out there and uh, is that a pretty sweet deal for y'all. Oh, my God. It yeah. is, right? It's a rod and gun club. Dude. We were doing NASCAR flybys, NFL games, and we and we were an adversary squadron. So we'd go down to Key West, you know, once or twice oh, a month. Play with them down there. Oh, yeah. And That's we were cool. the bad guys. We were the we'd, we'd fly bad guy tactics. Y'all kick the shit out of them, don't y'all? Oh, I know. Well, right. It's a learning because all the students are always like, "Yeah, we kicked the mess." I'm like, "Nah, yeah, yeah. come on." Well, a, a good adversary, you you don't have an ego, right? You want them. You want to die. I want to die for the motherland as a bad guy flying my red air tactics. But if <sighs> if they make a mistake, we'll punish them. Yeah. We, I mean, if the learning curve isn't like this, that squadron has a problem. Yeah. So and the skippers too. They want like, hey, you guys don't don't pull any punches. Um, yeah, yeah. That's how we train. Yeah. So we uh, so I ended up popping up on the radar of this uh, this like multi-billion dollar volatility arbitrage firm in Chicago. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I just, I, I applied everything I was learning as a fighter pilot to my trading, having a strategy, implementing tactics, contingency planning, not being emotional, having a checklist. Hey, yeah. If it does this, do this. Because mm -hmm. most people, when they invest, they get emotional. Yeah. And that, you and I, we can't get emotional. Man, I try and tell people when... When they say, like, oh, I'm rotating out, man. There's no job description for a sniper or something. Well, not that title, but if you take everything we had to learn to get that title yeah. and yeah. just shift it into that job frame, yeah. I mean, it takes a while to, to slide some of the stuff into the outline, you lose some stuff, you gain some stuff. But, yeah. man, there yeah. shouldn't be any reason why you don't tackle that. No. The business world, you can teach people how to sell a widget. or to do, You can teach people a lot of stuff. You can't teach them leadership. Yeah. You can't teach them execution. So that's what I learned in the military. So when I went up to this this Chicago trading firm in the board of trade, it you know teaching them how to debrief like something would fail and they're like oh let's go over here and do something else. I'm like no, let's go in the conference room. I'm going to be in the whiteboard. What went wrong? You know I, I taught them how to debrief and you would have thought it was like you know that's the second I, coming of God. That's Christ. how you learn leadership. I was like you're just sitting there and do all the debrief and then she's just learning to lead. Correct. So, I mean when someone yeah. te debriefs you, they're, that's actually a teaching moment. Yeah. And then. You start off being a leader by regurgitating that stuff. Yeah. That's why you hiccup in the beginning and Correct. it sounds kind of formal. Yeah. But then the, when that smoothness comes in, right, and you kind of make it your yeah. own, and you, man, you'll be a leader and telling people they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, those good ones, like you said, the, yeah. the colonel, man, they just, yeah. a lot of times, man, when you screw up, you whip your own ass. I ain't well, got to do exactly nothing. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Like you've already whipped your ass yeah. so bad, I don't have to do nothing. And uh, either on the teams or in a fighter squadron, if you mess up when you get in the debrief, it's a very important pronoun. I. I yeah. You know, it's the only time with, you say that. <laughs> You're like, uh, yeah, exactly. Bro, I fucked up. The only man, time yeah. you use I is when you fucked yeah. up. Ain't no we or us. Mm. Let's start with I, and then we can get it. You know, we'll get And then there. we'll love you for that. Correct. Yeah, we'll, we'll love you back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Most people, if, in most civilians, if they sat in like a, a fighter pilot debrief, you'd think we hated Hate each, each other. other yeah. But with the door closed, that's how we got to be. Doors open. Yeah. It wasn't uh, who's right in the debrief. It, it's what's right. So we'll take those lessons, learn to get better. But I, I got to fly with the blues one time with my buddy intake. Uh, and in that Blue Angel debrief, man, I was like, holy shit, these guys are brutal. Doors open. They're bad. They have to be best friends. One of, the, one of them sneezes, they're all dead. Yeah. So the, we're, we're, we're insanely uh, critical of each other behind cl closed doors. And when I brought that type of ethos to the, that trading firm, they were like, first of all, <laughs> that, that ain't easy for people in the civilian world. Like yeah. if I if I say I made a mistake, I'll what be, is that? Because death's not online. Exactly. Well, I, and, and plus they don't want to admit a mistake. Maybe they get fired. That's because death's like not that. online. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Well, that gets rid of. She gets rid of that. Because then, <laughs> yeah. th then you look at it as like, hey, this is what we're doing. This friend said that the the reason we're so close is because we're best friends. That's exactly right. And when you tell them that, you can look at it like scoldings, like, no, nah, man, this is how we talk. Because yeah. then you'll know if someone's. If they're browbeating you as opposed to picking on you, that that means that you've been keeping something back. Correct. And like yeah, you, yeah. you were trying to, and that, that's how we learn how to do that. Yeah. It when takes I, some time, but debriefing people in the business world, 
they always lead with apple polishing. I'm like, what do you have for the skipper that led this thing? Well, I think she did a great job. I'm like, no, no, no. Save the apple polishing for the bar. We're in a debrief. Yeah. If, and if you're going to throw a, a knife, make sure there's a note attached. Not just throwing knives, but how are they going to yeah. get better? And it's, it's really tough for the, uh, the business world to yeah. wrap their head around it. But the folks that do... They, their businesses end up really exploding. Sure, and the good ones put those together. Exactly. Yeah. They'll, they'll exactly hammer your ass right. while they're teaching you, but it doesn't feel like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And when someone just complains, but they don't offer a solution. Oh, no, 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 That's no. one of my That's biggest miserable. pet peeves yeah. in That's worse any than kind of quiet. business world exactly. or even yeah. in family. Yeah. Like, don't complain about something. Yeah. If, you, if you find something wrong with something, then present your idea of a solution yeah. to it. I'll never forget, what, you know, when you when I got to my first fleet squadron, they put you on the skipper's wing just to make sure you ain't the village idiot. So I'm flying with him for like a month, and halfway through that month, you know, I'm getting a gel with the guy, right? And I didn't have the best flight, and we get in a debrief, and man, he just he hands me my ass, right, with the knife and fork, and I'm like, and then I go to the officers' club later, and he comes in, you know, all happy, and I kind of do that tactical ninety degree turn, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <About face. laughs> and he goes, "Wiz, what's up, man?" I'm like, "Well, skipper, I." You know, think you were a little harsh on me in the debrief, and he looks at me like I'm an idiot. He's like, "What are you talking about, man?" He's you like, "Said that to the skipper." Yeah, he's, he's Way like, to "Go <laughs> <laughs> deep select for captain." I mean, I would have never done that. He goes, <laughs> "Man, I think the world of you. You wouldn't have these. You wouldn't be in my squadron if I didn't think you could do better. I think the world of your wife. I would be absolute failing if I didn't do what I did." And, and then he goes, "I took this the rest of my career." He goes, "I can be friendly with you, but we're not friends." Right. And my job is to and I'm like, I'm absorbing all that. I'm like, wow, I was like a two by four to the head. Uh, and I was like, that's pretty damn cool. So it, that was a big leadership moment. But trying to translate that to the business world can be frustrating. Sure. Because yeah. like you said, because I'd be sitting there in, in Chicago in my office and somebody bust open the door like whiz, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, did anybody die? And they're like, what? Like, did anybody die? They're like, no. I'm like, then calm down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever you're going to tell me after this is okay man. Yeah. trust me because yeah. i have had people bust in and somebody is dead so let's just throw oh, it away. yeah no, no, well you know that oh, yeah. it comes in before they do and uh exactly. th that's how when when skippers do that like the old man when the old man when he does that to you it's refreshing because then you really understand what an old man what the old man is correct before that yeah you're, yeah, like, you're kind of like ah he's young looking <laughs> but when they man, when they turn around and do something like that to you you're like yeah it, it's an instant kind of like oh oh okay those it. those type of moments stick out in my career too. Those were, yeah. and I would have stayed in for a guy like that. Those are the guys sure. who are like, you know what? I follow that guy up the hill, you know, machine gun nest type. If, it, if he if he became like that doing this, and that's what it is. Correct. Like, wow, man, is that guy? I really, it's yeah. a thing with us. Yeah, it is. Even though we don't say it, like, man, I kind of, yeah, I like what you, I like your style. Not going to tell him that. <laughs> yeah, I never tell him that at all. I'm like, dude, got a smooth style, man. You jerk. <laughs> what an ass. <laughs> Skipper's an ass. Oh, shit. Old man, only right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I. uh Three years, you know, in the Navy, every three years you get orders. So at the three-year point, the grass was kind of grown under my feet. And they told me, I mean, Chicago's nice. No offense to anybody from the Midwest, but February, walking from oh, the train awful. station to the Board of Trade is a survival That's not situation. nice. That's not nice. That's <laughs> rough, I'm man. Like I'm like stealing mean, dude, scarves off dumb, dead bodies. Dude. They're hard like, as they come out there in Chicago. No. You don't have to church it up, man. Yeah. No. I'm, that's a, where I'm the, a beach guy. The bulls and the bears hang out there. That's where they call <laughs> exactly. their pro teams at. That's exactly that's right. Not if you're not from Chicago, Chicago, you're not from Chicago. They no. say that, right? No. Yeah. You're Illinois over here, man. Yeah. Where in <laughs> Illinois? Uh, like oh, yeah. Yeah. We lived out in Naperville, out in Napertucky. Yeah. But I, uh, I like Chicago in the summer. I do not send me there in February. Well, Mel, so this is funny because people are like, oh, I love Chicago. I'm like, let me guess. You were there for a work conference in May for a weekend. Yeah. You got a nice steak and left. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, shut up. Great yeah. steak, pizza. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I know one time we had a, um, a gala up there and when we left home in Houston, it was like 80 something degrees and I had flip flops on and the shoes that I brought for the gala were like toe, you know, toeless sure. shoes or whatever. And we get there, I get off the airplane in my flip flops and it <laughs> is freezing and the wind is blowing so howling. hard. And like oh how there's a real howl. No wonder they're so pissed yeah. off all the time, man. Because that weather, I had never seen snow before. Oh so I joined the Navy. Oh, my God. Showed up for boot camp out there. The yeah. blizzard of 99 in March. Did look, you go to Great Lakes? Look at mm -hmm. Great Mistakes. I was there. <laughs> Cha-ching. Yeah. Checked on board. Hey, I'm from Texas. Never seen this before. It, it, it's uh, it's yeah. a different environment. I yeah. was like, babe, don't 
ever do this to me again. Hardcore. It goes through you, man. Yeah. Right through you. Yeah, no. So I'm not cut they, out they told me at the three-year point, they're like, if you stay, you're here. You become, you get assimilated. They, they use the that board. voice too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, they start turning gray. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, it's like this weird look they get. It's so I looked terrifying. at Susie. I'm like, because she, you know, she's from Boca. And I, after dragging her to some crappy Navy base, I'm like, let me get you home. So we moved down to, to Boca and I started uh, my own little financial company, Top Gun Options, teaching people how to train. And then about three, three or four years ago, I started Top Gun Fighter Foundation uh, to try and help reduce veteran suicide. I lost three guys, four now, uh, but uh, four guys, four Hornet guys to suicide. One guy was in my wedding, man, Swede, Eric Swenson, beautiful wife, five kids, uh, put a bullet in his head. And I'm like, got to do something about it, man. Mm -hmm. So put the ladder down. So three years ago, I started at Top Gun Fighter Foundation, which now we're calling No Fallen Heroes. Uh, so yeah. We'll get them right. That's what we're doing. <laughs> That's what we're trying That's to do. That's what we're man. doing, man. The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Stride Career Prep. Did you know that only 45% of high school students feel that they are prepared for college or careers? Today's sponsor, Stride Career Prep, is helping change that. I know that for me, when I graduated high school and moved on to college, I was not ready. I was definitely a part of that other 55% that were definitely not prepared. Stride Career Prep lets students take charge of their education and their future by combining real world skills, training, and traditional academics. Students can earn college credit while in high school, or they can get the training they need to land a job right after graduation. Stride Career Prep prepares your team for in-demand careers in business, tech, health science, criminal justice, and much more. Students can take courses developed by industry professionals, prepare for certifications, get hands-on experience, network, and most importantly, gain the confidence to succeed. Stride Career Prep is backed by over 20 years of experience in online learning. I really wish that this would have been available for me whenever I was graduating or whenever I was still in high school. It might have helped me uh, find my path a little sooner. You guys should definitely check them out. Take charge today at k12.com slash podcast. That is k12.com slash podcast. Whatever the nut, it's interesting because it's standard government. You know, the, the 22 a day or whatever numbers uh, that, that we were using is from three years ago. What's happened in the past three years? Scandemic. And then the withdrawal from Afghanistan, man. Oh, two wars collapsing down, biblical freeze. In the past three they years. Got sick. Infl I mean, I mean you know, most people are overlooking the fact that we've been through a kick in the shorts. Yeah. Couple you know why? <laughs> because Americans will get used to something. Exactly. Yeah. And, and they're productive. So if you're surviving through this and everyone Correct. thinks it's over, man, it's not. Yeah. We're just in it. I was like, the first part of this was you was getting your battle rhythm. We're getting we get used our, to it. We're, yeah. We get our asses kicked when we first get into country, and you know that. And then at the end of it, just because we kind of get complacent. Correct. We want to come home. Correct. But right now, everyone's getting their rhythm. Mm -hmm. this, this, everyone's changing, and you can overlook that. You know, we don't. Correct. Obviously, I, we, I see it. I feel it's it. It's almost like yeah. they said we had to go first. And whatever it is that was over there came here. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're having to deal with it. And it's it's a we got to stop that though, man. Well, we are. We're you know, it's like we don't do it like the leadership down, man. We're slow is smooth, smooth is fast, so we don't jerk them around, and scare them Correct. to death. That's a good point. We don't want to shock, no, because that's how we operate. <laughs> slow. And we are steady. shocking off troops like you can't believe Correct. it from the time we came in, and yeah. and and what they finished with a two Full two, throttle, two twenty man. year war. I mean, yeah. bro, you can't believe what that created. And I tell people, so I was like, hey man, right now military is asleep. You want me to wake them up? Because you can't imagine what came back here. So y'all, y'all creating all this chaos and havoc in our country, man. We ain't gonna have it. We got a sleeping giant right now. <laughs> oh, man. but it ain't, it ain't a giant, dude. It's something completely different. Won't take much to wake up either. <laughs> no, man. no, no. They're on. They're just on <laughs> I got all the boys and girls on vacation right now. They're kind of slumbering down. Hope, keep your cell phone near yeah, you. Yeah, keep yourself. But we're gonna fix this so we don't have to activate them suckers and get them upset. That's the point. That's I'm exactly right. I'm tired of all that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you start your foundation. You've mm -hmm. got that going on. And the biggest thing you've got going on right now is this documentary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can no Fallen Heroes, man. So, that? yeah, Marcus and I, shit, we, we went down range together. Different range. Yeah. <laughs> different range. Completely different range, man. And uh, that was literally a, a life-changing experience. I've never... It, it it's I get sad for a second, then the new me corrects the the sad old me because 
there was a little bit of regret that it took 50 whatever years to get to back to me stop man. doing that that's you know? just look at the first part of this was training yeah and you never got I mean, it'd be like graduating all oh, flight school and keep looking back and getting pissed at what True. happened and that, yeah 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 right. no well new, new me smacks me yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when i get that little tinge. i'm here to remind you of that thank you no, that's my You're job. A good wingman that's right thank you he I does he that, calls man. me out by the blue everyone's it's it's fucking weird because my phone will ring at the right moment man from this guy it's creepy. I don't know if you got cameras. Or, 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 I don't know what he does, but I'm like, my, it's, and it says Mark is my brother too. I'm like, that's perfectly timed. Uh, um, coincidence, but no, right? So, no, God winks. That's right. So yes. th that's what I call him. So uh, yeah. So after doing that, I just, I, I could, it just completely, it completely changed my life, man. And uh, trying to put the ladder down uh, yeah. for this life saving treatment. Uh, it is, it, it literally changed my life. So, uh, lucky enough to go with Marcus and some other great Americans, and I'm one of the few aviators that have done it because most guys and gals, when they get out and go to the airlines or whatever, FAA form. Do you suffer from PTSD, depression? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to ruin their airline. PTSD career. means pissed off, tired, looking for something to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use that. That's good. You know, yeah. I'm talking about, yeah. I, and it's almost as if I'm sorry. Well, I was just gonna say, so Marcus and. Wiz go down to Mexico um, with Mission Within and uh, through the VETS program, which we've had the Capones on. Um, Marcus and Amber. Marcus are and Amber Angels Capone. on Earth. Yeah. yeah. So, Lifesavers. Um, yeah. After we had them. I didn't on. know you were. So are you, is, he's on the radar now. I was, I was yeah. dancing around That's the greatest, that. Greatest, yeah, okay. greatest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Greatest I didn't know man. what to say. So we go, okay. they go down and um, they. And do, JT. JT. Yeah. yeah. And they do. The unusuals. Yeah. The unusuals, man. So they do this um <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> this medicine that has been really helping I mean, it's saving lives. Yeah. And anyway, so I wanted to preface that for the listeners. Thousands but, of years old medicine. Yeah. It, it's it's almost as if man I was not I don't know if we were not paying attention. I guess we weren't because when you what you said a minute ago, it was almost like I was in my job fighting as hard as I could and you were too, and then I realized like our buddies are that are suffering, like we looked up and saw that. <laughs> and like, hold on for a second, and all the rest of this crap. Completely. New mission, yeah. New nine line. That shit. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Let, we're not letting that happen. I, Correct. And I don't know. I, I feel I could feel that pressure, like it was a little bit of my fault, but I, because I wasn't paying attention to that. Yeah. Because we are tough, right? Yeah. Don't show weakness. Right. Yeah. But now, if you still, if you don't show it, eventually we'll feel it, and then oh, it'll bubble up. Yeah, yeah. bubble up. So the, the the navy does an incredibly great job of teaching guys like Marcus and I to compartmentalize, man, to put, you know, if I'm flying into a target and Marcus gets smoked, I go, I'll mourn him later. I got to go. How about that? Yeah. And guess what? I don't get to mourn him later because it's on to the next thing. And then the next guy gets smoked. Mm -hmm. So all those little boxes, man, they get shoved all down here. And one day it's like a jack in the box, uh, you know, and that could be a bad. I thought about that, man, and trying to grieve one of your buddies and then the next one dies. It's, and it's just, they just it. keep going, man. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody, it's a. Everything moves with the new, the new. The I, new. I hadn't thought about it like that, but yeah, a lot. Of, that's the way I looked at it, man. A lot, a lot of little jack in the boxes that I, people I didn't get to mourn, or or shit that I didn't, you know, in my own life I didn't get to mourn. Uh, and this medicine was just absolutely uh, incredible. I uh, I lost my sister to a drunk driver when she was nineteen. My sister Monica. We were that, like I was telling you, that Irish Catholic family. I was an altar boy. Yeah. church every sunday a little coat and tie i'd go to mass and then be an altar boy i mean we were i went to an all boys thanks mom and dad catholic high school <laughs> <laughs> that sucked yeah. um so we were that family and then uh it was my older brother and my two sisters were all at villanova mm -hmm. and she got killed by a drunk driver uh broke her neck man and that uh destroyed my family my mm -hmm. family she was right in the middle and done and then it destroyed me because I'm like, what type of fucking God kills my sister and, uh, you know, and destroys my family? So I lost, I lost my faith. And then uh, my dad, he, he died of a broken heart because mm. um, I played sports in high school and I missed the bus, you know, on the way home. And my dad would pick me up and the cemetery was in between our, my high school and, and home. And uh, he stopped every day and he got out and he cried at that grave site, man. So, um, uh, on the medicine, I, uh, they both, they both came and they both, they looked incredible. They looked, they were perfect. And I felt a piece that I haven't felt in decades and they went away. 
And I was, I was mortified. I was, it was horror that, that they were leaving. And on the medicine, if you, if you, don't, if you don't get it, God's going to show you again. And they came back. And this time, they started to go away, and I followed them, and they went into everything. They went into me. I saw my sister. She went right over towards my daughter, Keely. And it was, I, it was incredible. I, I healed. In that moment, I healed. And it was, uh, it, was, it was awesome. It was awesome. I've never, it was a peace that I've never felt before. And uh, a lot of stupid shit I've done in my life, uh, <laughs> in my marriage, in my uh, drinking, it was, uh, God actually looked at me and was like, you serious, man? You think I, I got a pro? It's all, I forget. There was a concept that I read in a, in a Course on Miracles. Forgiveness doesn't exist in heaven because there's no need for it. It's like a foreign concept. They're like, what are you, are you insane? God was looking at me in everything. Mm-hmm. Literally, it was kind of like that. Like, you're good, Matthew. Yeah. Now let's go focus on, on some stuff. That's right. Stop worrying about dumb shit. We got you. Exactly. The, the, when I went into the medicine. <laughs> he has I, a great sense of humor. <laughs> Here's how I know God has a sense of humor. So I'm doubting Matthew, right? Because after, as the medicine started to work, all of a sudden I get lifted up into space. And instead of being scared, I was just absolutely at peace. And it was just, it was, it was beautiful. And then kind of like that, this is creepy. It was exactly like that. This massive white light right there and i'm like oh man is that god so i kind of focus on it and i'm like are you god and then the music god there was no words exchanged at all in this journey it was done through music it was communicated through so when god said yes it was i felt it Mm -hmm. and i just like kind of exploded like that was god so after i collected myself Mm -hmm. i came back and i'm like doubting matthew goes can you give me a sign and I shit you negative. Around that white light in cursive writing, the word sign started going like this. <laughs> I'm like, and I blew up again. And I came back and I'm like, now that shit's, that's, that's, my God's funny. It's funny. Yeah. He's got a sense of humor. <laughs> it, it well, then that's when it gets scary at the same time. Well, no, no, like, I was terrified. I'm like, <laughs> it is. What kind of sense of humor you got, man? You know what I mean? <laughs> Because <laughs> you've had a dark sense of humor a couple times. Right, right. In my that's life. my point. I'm like, dude, yeah. you know, it's funny. And then you start to realize what's what was what actually is humor. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that man, you're always a learning thing. And love is impactful. It follows you everywhere you want to go. You're the yeah. one that goes down the trails. Correct. And the boss is kind of sitting there watching you. Yeah. Hey, little, you learn. So, that's a great point because so after I composed myself, that you know the the, the sign thing was just I, I needed that, but it was incredible. Cause then it was like, all right, now, now you're ready to go. You know, let me let me show you uh, everything. And he, and it was the most incredible, uh, uplifting experience. Uh, and it was like a movie camera. Like diff- things in my life, things that weren't meant for me. The answers. It was just, I, I can't even words can't explain it. Yeah. That was the Ibogaine. That's obviously. just what I was so saying. Did that, no way to explain exactly. Yeah. But do you it, think uh, that brought you back to your faith after losing your sister and everything? Do you is that like a segue I am back? The most spiritual I've ever been in my life. That's one of the things that I like. I when I'm telling people about this medicine, I'm like, it, there's a huge difference between drugs and and medicine. Oh yeah. And this, yes, you can call. We're all conditioned to think of a psychedelic as a drug because that's what our Correct. government has taught us. That's what yeah. our parent like it. I, on drugs. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's huge. There's a huge difference though when it is used medicinally. It is so healing, mm-hmm. and not only is it healing people, but it's actually bringing them closer to their their faith. We know people that did never believe in God. Mm-hmm. Like it was never instilled in them. They weren't raised in in any sort of household that had a belief system. Yeah, and they did this medicine, and now they're like huge believers and i'm like that is so amazing to me that not only is this healing people like physically and mentally but spiritually it yeah. is it's the whole mind body spirit it really is bringing people back it, to it, truth reset your central nervous system yeah and it, and, and the, the, it's, it's a cure it there's is. a difference between a cure yeah. and, and a drug like a drug if they if you got to keep going into the same doctor they keep keeping the same stuff where you're sick your whole life yeah. that's not a cure. Yeah. In fact, right. this stuff's so scary. Like, if you want something to really heal you, you're going to go through some pain. Yeah. 
It, oh, this is not. This was not. This isn't fun. fun. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, we'd make that perfectly clear when you talk about like I say, like yeah. I get scared. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. that no, kind this of. This was a, like you said the other day, like prize a surgery. Fight. Yeah, you had man. To get ready for it was a prize fight for man. a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was so I was uh, you know I'm in my one man luge. Uh, and there's four, four, you know, these guys, they, some of them sounded like they were getting cut in half by a saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm like, wow. I mean, they were, and I was worried too. Cause I'm like, God, you're going <laughs> to, you're going to kick me in the ass. Are y'all later? going one by one down here? Or what are we doing here? <laughs> I did think that I'm like, well, Bro, uh, Marcus, yeah. JT. <laughs> they started with me. <laughs> you were, yeah. remember that? You were one of the guys going through hell. Dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I go down there frequently. Okay. So. <laughs> Just in case y'all slip up and get down here, I don't want you to stick around. Yeah. And get back up. But this is to to your point. This the, the and and Martine had a great percentage because the next day I'm like I'm cured and healed. He's like eh, five mm-hmm. percent is probably down here. Ninety five percent is the integration. Mm-hmm. The you there's work to do. This ain't go to Mexico for a weekend, take a yeah. pill, and your life's great. Uh, some of the integration was was bad uh, because. What God did went in there. He, he turned on a spotlight and showed you where all the roaches were, and you got to kill them roaches. If you just kind of okay, thanks God, turn the light back off. You're gonna get back in your old ways. Mm-hmm. But like, so we were talking about this the other day. I, I mean, unfortunately, I was a drinker, man. I, I I'm not gonna blame it on being Irish, but I, eight nine months, not a didn't even look at it. Now mm-hmm. I'm like maybe a, a glass of cab with a with a steak. But even then, it's it completely deleted all that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm a coffee fiend gone caffeine gone it it literally was a control alt delete for me and looking at you man i mean dude you are a different that's, that's machine a, that's the best part is because it gave me a new habit it told me that i had to drink coffee in the morning one cup yeah. for this he, what he had never drank never coffee had before. before dude and, i transferred that to you in there. yeah so yeah. no drinking no sugar uh yeah he still you know, doesn't drink alcohol when, but when, when you wake up everything it. like i said it resets your essential nerve service everything yeah. tastes brand new it's the first time yeah. you eat pineapple it tastes what it tastes like. Yeah. Remember that? And, and uh, That's so it took all of my habits away and then gave me coffee and a cup of some other cool stuff too. I was like, nice. <laughs> I'm liking the new I'm car. I'm like, dude, what's up, man? I get to, you know, where you get to wear the fishing, fat guy fishing shirts all the time now. That's not part of it. But I, uh, it's, uh, if you, oh, the integration's huge. It's like going to yeah. school or going to a martial arts studio, study, and then you, you got to train at home gotta too. Practice. Yeah, you got to practice. And, and go over that stuff and yeah. it's almost as if it opens your life to your new routine correct but you have to yeah. set that in there yeah and if all you, if you do it it's a lot it, it's changed forever correct you can't i mean it's, it's but that so that was the ibo game the the the, the what was a day and a half late yeah we did the five meo which you heard <laughs> yeah I, <laughs> that was a harsh it wasn't hard i can't say it was a horror story but i i've never done a forward flip in my life and i flipped in the bed that was an exorcism um, I don't remember doing it. All I remember is accelerating uh, into oneness with light, love, energy, uh, infinity. Oh, that's what I wanted to say on the Ibo game when God did the the sign around, you know, sign around the lights, and I'm like, it is God. It's God. And I said, where have you been? And he said, I have always been, and I always will be. Mm-hmm. And he's like, where have you? He didn't say, where have you been? But I got the feeling like yeah. he's like. <laughs> That's how you yeah, know it's you good, mean? dude. Because like, man, you don't got to say a damn no, word, dude. It's it like, was kind of like, I've always, you, you've been a little lost, Matthew. Mm-hmm. So back to your point, I, I have never been more spiritual in my life. So going back to your point about using this for spirituality and, and those type of purposes, mm-hmm. man, game on. Fights yeah. on. Uh, absolutely. Because I've never, it took me decades to find my faith again. And like we talked about the other night, I don't want to alarm people when I say this, I don't have faith anymore. I have knowledge. Yeah. Faith was when I didn't believe. I kind of had to like pretend, ain't no faith anymore, man. Yeah. He, it went. You're full believer. <laughs> I got a direct message. Yeah, there's yeah. a difference. I was one, I was one with, I get it now, when when ego goes and I was one with, mm-hmm. with source and it, it I could not have been uh, better. It helped my tinnitus. I mean, it, it just, it, it, it life changing. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, we got back, and I'm like, since I was one of the pilots, and we got a lot of air crew aviators that are all lying and just kind of under the radar. I have an F-16 buddy. He's like, dude, I've been in therapy for 15 years, and I pay cash because I don't want the FAA or Uncle Sam to find out. So I went back down uh, with the documentary crew down to, to the mission within with Doc, uh, and we took some a- aviators and air crew through. Just great guys with different various levels of PTSD. One guy, C-130 pilot. 
he got up, uh, you know, from the left seat to go in the back for something. They jinked. They bounced him off the ceiling and he broke his neck. Oh my gosh. Another guy, F-14 guy, dropped on what he thought was bad guys in Iraq, 12 innocent uh, mm -hmm. folks. So mm -hmm. each one of these guys that went down to do the medicine, man, it was it was incredible. But it was a, it was a different experience for me, man. Going back down, instead of flying around on my magic carpet with God and oneness and seeing my sister and my dad, this one was a little bit of an instructor pilot tour. Because... Mm -hmm. uh, one of the guides said, anybody who's come to do the medicine again, who's doing it to help people, the medicine's going to show you all of it. Mm -hmm. So you can help people. I'm like, I wish you would told me that beforehand. I'm not really <laughs> As part of the that, brief. So and, with this documentary, yeah. they're filming this whole thing. They filmed it. Yeah, they filmed it. And we uh, we filmed some of the integration and how the guys are doing and stuff like that. But yeah, we filmed, we filmed, the, we filmed the five MEO. I didn't flip in this one, but yeah, so we've... Uh, it's 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 an incredible project and we're really even just talking about it is helping save people's lives because i'm getting messages one message today is like oh uh, you know why is this only for veterans i'm like no 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 but this isn't only for veterans it's for any everybody's got trauma mm -hmm. everybody you know has suffered in, in one way this isn't just for veterans uh but you know i call this radical healing right mm -hmm. we're, we're radical we're radical dudes so maybe this you can do breath work meditation Climb to a mountain, maybe to to find peace or whatever. Guys like Marcus and I, maybe this is what God kind of put on the earth when when the oh, thing was formed. I call it confession. Formed. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like truth. I, and truth. I call it confession. You need it, huh? Yeah. On the outside, you can keep something from somebody. No. <laughs> yeah. Once you put that in there, man, it's like. Yeah. So, so the second time I did the medicine, as I could feel the medicine taking effect. My head's shaking back and forth, like this general rocking. And I'm like, oh, I don't like this, how this is starting. This is not good. Until I realized it, I believe this literally was God who had my head and he was just gently shaking it. <laughs> With each shake, sh shit, stuff was bad, stuff was falling away. Oh and gosh. I felt it. I didn't like it though. So halfway through this, I tried to lie to God. So I'm like, oh, okay, everything bad's gone. Go well. Let's get going. He's like, <laughs> I, enough. <laughs> God looked at me like, did you just try to lie to me? Yeah. Yeah. Also a funny moment. He's like, okay, now there's more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now it's a little harder and, and a little more violent. Shit yeah. out of you. <laughs> now I'm gonna... yeah. And then I got airborne. But the, the, the coolest part of this project I want to share with you guys, or one of the cool parts is unlike, you know, Navy special warfare or Rangers or JTACs or guys like this, we have female fighter pilots and air crew. Mm -hmm. So when I started this project, uh, you know, I was we're five white dudes. I'm like, let me put up the bad signal. So I called a couple female F-18 uh, ladies and uh, sure, Wiz, we'd, we'd love help healing uh, from our PTSD. I'm like, great. And they're like, yeah, it's from any from combat is from rape and sexual assault. And I'm like, mm. shit, Yeah. I kicked over a rock. And they're like, no offense. Why don't you guys go first? And then so after we've come back as of today and I got a, a email from Arrow. Uh, this morning, F-15 female, we have four, uh, five uh, female fighter pilots and air crew that want to do the medicine and heal for this project. Oh, so wow. uh, we want to show that it ain't just a bunch of uh, meat yeah. eater uh, dudes. So we're going to put the ladder down and help some of these female That's so cool. uh, females out as well. Oh, well. You know, when you go out and you come back better, it doesn't, people are like, whatever they judge you, you don't, it doesn't bounce on. It just, it's like, hey, I get what, what you think, man, and how you feel, but I'm just telling you. Yeah, it doesn't, so, that, that, that's past. We're past all that. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the name of the documentary? No Fallen Heroes. And we're going to... Um, yeah, we actually got a trailer right here. Yeah, we could, we're going to uh, play in the clip on uh, the YouTube. So those of you that are listening on the audio, whether it's um, Spotify, or Spotify Apple, or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, go to the YouTube and watch the... Uh, if you watch this show, you can see awesome. the trailer to it. Yeah. Um, and when will the project be released? What are you? We're trying to release on Veterans Day. Uh -huh. We're trying to do our our, our premiere. Um, we did a soft launch down in Boca, God's Waiting Room, a couple weekends ago, where we showed like a twenty three minute extended. That's not but... what. No, 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 all that stuff's here in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So all right, this is a four minute clip. Four all right. Minutes. Yep. Sweet. Okay. Three. Uh, my name
name is Matthew Buckley. My call sign as a fighter pilot was Wiz. Served the United States Navy on active duty for 10 years and then flew fighters in the reserves for six years. Being a fighter pilot for the United States Navy was the culmination of a dream. Dogfights at supersonic speed on the edge of consciousness, life and death situations created stress, trauma, depression, anxiety, and fear. I was searching for an answer and I found it. Shockingly, it was psychedelic medicine. The, the military does an incredibly good job of, of training you for combat and, and doing some pretty horrible stuff to another human being. And then when they're done with you, they do a pretty shitty job of transitioning you back to being a human. This plant medicine has been around for thousands and thousands of years. It took me on a journey downrange with these four other incredible men, human beings, veterans. As a result of the medicine, I literally found God. I took the Ibogaine. It was like I got lifted up and then I exploded into forever. I felt infinity. I got a rock. What happens in this world is beyond logic. And when these heroes move from the speed of sound to the speed of life, the job really gets dangerous because so many of their wounds are invisible. Emotions get suppressed as a means of survival. Daniel Summers, who served two tours in Iraq, took his own life. He was just 30 years old. Sadly, he is not the first veteran to do so. 8,000 U.S. veterans commit suicide each year. That's an average of 22 per day. We're here to tell you this is not the way out. Literally 52 years of ego, of regret, shame, pain, death, alcohol, drugs disintegrated in the blink of an eye. I exploded into light, energy, love, indescribable. 80% of the volunteers in that study reported that the experience was among the five most personally meaningful and spiritually significant experiences of their lives it was it was peace it was a peace that i have never felt before we're going to be saving lives we're going to be changing attitudes no higher purpose no higher calling than helping your fellow woman helping your fellow man On May 27th, with the opening of Maverick Top Gun, we step out of the cockpit into the real-life stories of decorated pilots. We're going to heal everybody, not just veterans. Nobody is left behind. fly like that <laughs> i fly better now i'm proud of you man what'd you guys think i, I thought, love it oh yeah great yeah. job awesome yeah, yeah i love it what do y'all think andrew that's awesome i can't wait to see it for real it's yeah incredible. yeah it's, i watched i watched the full eight minute version i got later <laughs> uh, there's yeah. no way a, what a year was it may 20th we did ours mm -hmm. two words right a year a little over a year and a half ago there's no way in hell i i thought i'd be it, any of this i mean it's just been an incredible mm -hmm. i literally i've learned to give it up to the holy spirit and god and just I, i'm he, it's flying lead i'm flying wing but i, I can't believe I'm, I'm i'm further i'm sitting here with you guys but just on this mission because man as what, it, what when you tell somebody that number 22 a day or whatever it is the color runs out of their face because it's not like the government's having a press conference every day like by the way so we gotta we gotta we gotta put down the ladder yeah you know fights on we gotta save lives man That's so awesome yeah i'm excited I I am too. I love it. I love that you're doing this and um and 
how do people like what do you want people to do yeah no fallen heroes.com well i mean the, the first thing we're doing we're, we're, we're looking for for funding to finish it mm -hmm. we got we this all got us to the point we got through the journey and stuff like that so if anybody wants to help us <laughs> finish it so to speak um because well as you know man making a movie ain't because you know i talked to a producer i'm like hey this song would be cool he's like yeah that's 100 grand i'm like uh, what? oh you, yeah. you can't <laughs> if, so what it's unbelievable I, I am learning a lot about this thought about doing a kickstart yeah we've i'm looking at uh, i i will succeed or i'm gonna die trying i will figure out how to uh, get I funded think a kickstart i was thinking about yeah, this yesterday a, after yeah. we had dinner um because like speaking of jt our friend uh JT, they did range 15 all through a kickstart oh, i didn't know that did they yeah it was oh. fully funded Bro. by by i'm sorry man i thought they yeah. already told you that oh yeah no the, i thought they kind of did okay no, you, you, yeah. we get online and say we're gonna film a movie. i don't know if kickstart was the actual platform but you one of those them, but it was something we, like we've kind of looked into a couple i haven't dug i haven't yeah. taken a deep dive yet and all right it was i mean we donated on it because the people get everybody can get involved every, everybody can donate you can you pitch can into donate. the fight to oh all right you can donate to you know the people that have ten dollars to the people that have ten blanket bids everybody okay and they word of mouth it it's really that's why i've been focusing on the one maybe i need to focus on the many fo focus on the many okay and the this, one will show up this is a, a true which i don't want to use the word crowd crowdfunding sounds cheesy but it really is because okay. it's this affects everybody and i mean it when Correct. when marcus was healed like that it's a ripple effect yeah. and i told him like before he went and i started crying i was like <laughs> this isn't to heal you this is to heal generations mm -hmm. this is me this is the kids this is our grandkids yeah. because it starts with you it helps break the generational chains and and yeah, it will been, it will help us it's for futures thank so, god you said that because there was a couple things like before marcus and i did the medicine that they tell you that i thought were like cheesy lines the first one was the medicine calls to you. I'm like, that sounds dumb. After doing it, I'm like, it does. Yeah, hey, you, man, you just you can't wind up down there. Feel it. I mean, yeah. well, the way we talk, not so let me let me be very clear here. Yeah. All right. I mean, we get a medical strapped up with leads and a doctor sitting there over top of you. And Nurses. I mean, and, and yeah. It's different for everybody. Yeah. And they sent my ass straight to hell. So I mean. <laughs> I may mean, have come out better, but it wasn't for yeah. lack of fighting. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm not saying dude. it's fun, but it's it is healing. So anyway. and then I made sure I stayed on the path, so I wouldn't have to go back down in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That stove's hot. I mean, there's some people yeah. where you have a glorious life and whatever. I learned things the hard yeah. way, apparently. Mm -hmm. And but you, everyone that does it, it is a ripple effect. So it does yeah. help so many, and that's why I think if you do it as a crowdfunding thing. Yeah. I, so many people would get involved. Um, I'm glad you said the generational thing too, because this was another one I, I read in the manual, right? You can heal three generations on the medicine. I'm like, that sounds dumb. I guarantee you, and, and if you you might not believe me, I believe this to my core. I healed my father. Mm -hmm. I saw it, yeah. right? He was healed. And then there's no way in hell my dad growing up even knew what the word meditation meant. But the fact that my kids, mm -hmm. my son Matthew or Jack or Keely, no, my my son, they're starting to do mindful. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. So you're right. You throw a pebble in a pond, man. Yeah. This, this, this is a conversation for a flip. whole nother episode. But I totally yeah. believe that you can heal your your people that have passed by. Isn't that great? You know, I mean, you can do it through prayer. You can do it through meditation. Mm -hmm. Definitely through the medicine. It's not Correct. even like you don't even have be a to good person. It. So it does yeah. make you into. I mean, you just, you just, you're, Isn't that sad, you're though, your good man? self. So r real quick story when. Uh, I was sitting, Daniel Carcillo, hockey player, who, who's trying to get MDMA for, he was a Chicago Blackhawk, head injury, so he runs We Sauna Health. He was sitting with Susie and my kids, and he was kind of peppering me with questions about the medicine, stuff like that. And he paused, and he looked at them, and it was like the sound of music. I felt like I was Captain Von Trapp, and they were lined up. And he looks at them and says, uh, how is he? And when he said that, like as the that words went over to them, I had a little flash of horror because they all kind of looked at me and they had this scared look and I, I got scared and leave it to Keely. She's like, he's better. And that, I mean, that just meant the world. And I'm like, so again, old me was sad for half a second, like it, but new me was like, yeah, you know, here I am, man. And, and I'm good and I'm better. But to see my kids, they were a little nervous at first, first. Can we say this? But she's like, he's better. It's like, shit. Well, yeah. It, you know, oh, it come for sure. Like, hey, man, I come, apparently, I'm 20 years, I look 20 years younger. I mean, they don't recognize me. 
Yeah. 20 years? Come on now. 25, then. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of girls, you don't lie to your buddies. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, that's how the microphone is in between me and you. <laughs> All right, so oh my God, how man. do people find you on Instagram and yeah, follow uh, your story or oh, Facebook oh, or whatever? Yeah, great, man. <laughs> uh, official uh, E. Matthew Buckley on uh, Instagram. And then, like I said, NoFallenHeroes.com. Um, no Fallen Heroes on Facebook. Uh, yeah, all that stuff, man. And so, you know, I was doing some research last night uh, up, above here because I, I had to figure out who Marcus Luttrell was, you know, because I was going on his podcast. And you apparently wrote like a book or something. <laughs> but I, I brought you a signed copy of my book. So maybe sign, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, uh, when I, maybe I'll get around to reading yours Aww, someday. I love it. <laughs> I it but no, thanks for having me. This has Aww. been just your, for your hospitality this week and everything, man. And uh, thanks for your phone calls, dude. They, literally, they are. It's creepy. Or you know what? It isn't because now <laughs> I know. I know. No, it's the, the, it's the time. They'll get creepier. I, I, yeah. I you know what? He's the aviator now because uh -huh. when I'm I'm stuck in something. I look up and he rolls in from 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 like close. Marcus does that. I'm an LPO. He like tends I, yeah. I to reach out. And and I'm Roll call. It. That's it, bro. <laughs> I get along with both sides. Yeah. When I show up, it's for a reason. Just listen to me. I've learned that, man. All I've right. learned that. But thanks for everything. You guys have been great, man. This is this is a God moment. I'm looking forward to it. Oh. Maybe you guys can make it to the premiere. No Fallen Heroes or yeah, one of them or something. Oh, we'll, we'll come over. Nice. We'll do a Houston show or something like that. Let's do a Houston premiere. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. 